Hi everybody, I'm Michelle Anderson, founder of Clarinet Mentors. Today's free video is going to give you a very mini lesson on about five or six important tools and tricks to know about if you're out playing a concert or at a rehearsal and something doesn't work in your clarinet. Now I have to say, your best friend in the whole world should be a great clarinet repairman, and I'm lucky I know a few of them. And definitely, if something major is wrong, you need a good repairman to help you. But sometimes you're somewhere where there's no repairman nearby and you have to make a quick repair. So I want to show you some things you can do quite easily to get yourself through a concert or rehearsal until you get your instrument in the hands of a good performer. So my first little gadget that I love to have is a roll of a special kind of tape, plumber's tape. The other name for it is thread seal tape. And if you look at this, um, this little roll cost me less than two dollars at a local hardware store. It's a sort of silicone tape. It's not sticky. It doesn't have an adhesive, but it sticks really well to itself. This is very handy if anything goes wrong with the corks on your instrument. So for example, I was at a concert recently and I was putting my bell on my clarinet and suddenly it didn't fit properly at all. And when I checked, my cork had disintegrated and was breaking into pieces. Now this is a rare event, um, but it happens. So take a look at my cork here. We can see there's a piece missing. In that moment, I need to get it fixed. So I can take a piece of this thread seal tape, and because it sticks to itself, if I lay it across the broken cork and just wrap it around, this will seal onto itself really nicely now, not the most elegant looking thing, but there's my bell, nice tight seal. It was great, got me through the concert no problem. Now, with all of our joints that the corks hold things together on, it's important that they be airtight. If we have air leaking out of them, it's kind of the same thing that would happen if our fingers weren't covering the holes properly. We would feel resistance out of the instrument, it would sound fuzzy, and that's one of those things that can make your instrument hard to play and you may not know the source of it. The other time that I find that uh, thread seal tape handy is if I'm in a situation where I'm testing mouthpieces. You know, although theoretically all mouthpieces and barrels are the same size, sometimes they'll feel loose. And again, just a few wraps of silicone tape will let you try it effectively. And then if you find a mouthpiece you love and it's a bit loose, you can always have a repairman put a proper permanent thicker cork on there. My favorite emergency gadget number two a rubber band and I always have a few of these in my case. In fact last summer I was teaching at a summer music camp with a bunch of students and I had several in my case. By the concert they were all gone. I had so many students who had little emergencies and um, again in a pinch it'll get you through. So the main thing I use a rubber band for is if I have a spring malfunction. The springs are the little pieces of wire that when we push a key down allow it to spring back up again. So right now I'm pushing this key down, I'll turn it on, and you can see how these two pads are moving up and down. Let's say for some reason that spring just broke. Again, very rare, but it does happen. What the rubber band can do for us is put in a quick fix. So uh, what we have to do is figure out what key should be held closed that the spring would usually hold closed. So if it was this side one here, let's say that that pad was no longer closing, I could pull it apart, wrap my rubber band around that key just to make sure that pad was closing. Because again, if the spring is broken, the pad might be leaking. Now sometimes these quick fixes make it a little resistant. Maybe the rubber band is, is tighter than a spring would be but you can still get through the show. So it might be that as I'm playing, I find that side key a little harder to push, but it still works. So again, this is for emergency, short-term fixing. You can pretty well figure out a way to run a rubber band through your instrument to fix any spring malfunction. Um, and in a pinch, we even had a student who, whose ligature just shattered, it just fell apart. So we took a bunch of rubber bands and put her reed on as tightly as we could with the rubber bands. Not ideal, but if you don't have a spare ligature, which is a good idea to have, that can be helpful for you. Now there are many tools that are handy objects to have in your clarinet case, and I'm not giving you the complete list by any means, 
but maybe just some of the things that you may not have heard of before and you would find helpful. Another thing I really like is uh, this pad cleaning paper. So this particular one just says cleaning paper. There's a variety of different brands out there. They all work the same way. It's basically like a really thin tissue paper and I use this for two different purposes. Sometimes you're playing along and you press open a key and instead of the note coming out pure and simply the way we want it to, it kind of gurgles. And it means we've got water trapped under that pad. And you know, ideally we want to swab our instrument well, get the water out of the inside because we probably have a little river running through our instrument into that pad um, and dry it out. But also we do want the pad itself to get dry. It's not good for the pad to be sitting in water. So we can take a little piece of our paper and simply slide it under the wet pad, let's say it's this one here, slide it under there and have it blot, have it soak up the water that's there. The other thing that this paper is very handy for, and in a pinch you could use ordinary paper, although it's great to have this and it's inexpensive, sometimes we have what I call sticky pads and um, you'll hear it where you open a pad up and it should open silently but sometimes you'll hear a clicking sound just at the moment it opens it kind of sounds like and you'll know it if you hear it it's an unusual noise that's usually caused by sugar going through your instrument and you can prevent that by anytime you've had a soft drink or something sweet right before you play your instrument Ideally brush your teeth, but again, if that's not available, at least have a drink of water, kind of rinse your mouth out, and play. If those pads are sticky, the process is similar to what I just showed you. We put our paper under there, we close off the key, and there'll be a little bit of friction as we pull it out. And we can even increase that by pushing down a little bit on the pad and then pulling the paper out. And that will sort of a little bit put pressure on the top of the pad. That usually, usually two or three passes is enough to fix it. And you test it after each pass. You might notice the clicking gets softer and softer and eventually it's clean. Sometimes you'll even see kind of dirt on your piece of paper that shows you that was there. Very handy to know about. Usually preventable by not blowing sugar into your instrument, but sometimes it happens. Another item that should always be in your case is a little screwdriver. You never know when a screw on your clarinet is just going to come loose or, heaven forbid, fall out and you need a screwdriver to put it back together. Again, this is just a little drugstore one. It's handy if they have a spinning end on it because sometimes these screws are kind of awkward to get into and as we're doing it, it's easier to, to hold on to if it has the swivel tip. That would be something I recommend you have in your case. And other than that, there are all kinds of other little gadgets that are handy but not necessary. Um, some of the other things I have in my case, I highly recommend you think of a better reed case than the simple little plastic holder that your reeds come in when you buy them from the store. The basic concept is we want our reeds to sit on a flat surface and be smooshed down onto it. So within that there's a huge variety of reed cases out there. There's something by Lavaz called the Reed Guard that's just a plastic, hard plastic one. It's inexpensive, probably two or three dollars, and it's definitely better than what your reed comes in. Um, then there's sort of beautiful handmade, you know, gorgeous wooden ones with uh, special space-age plastic in there that holds it down. Um, but there are many cases along this line that probably range in price from about forty dollars to a hundred fifty dollars. They do make your reeds last longer, which is what the value is. Having said that, I always have a couple little single reeds tossed into my case that are my emergency backups. Every now and then, I don't know, full moon or something, my reed case might not end up in my case if I was very absent-minded packing up, and at least I have an emergency backup reed. So if you have a big case like this, I recommend you always have just a couple spares in your case because you never know what might happen. Other handy gadgets that I have talked about in other videos, so I'll do it briefly. Sometimes I really like to use a neck strap. If I'm standing to perform, I find it handy. Also, um, at times my wrist gets a little bit uh, overworked and this takes some of the pressure off. It puts most of the weight on my neck. I really like this one, it's by B&G. Uh, it has a leather adapter. If your thumb rest does not have the ring for it, then this leather piece fits over it. 
Um, my other clarinet does have a ring, in which case I just use the hook. So it depends on which instrument I'm playing. This is a really handy gadget. One last thing I do want to mention is about swabs. This is, of course, the cleaning cloth that comes with our clarinets. There are many of them out there, but I just kind of want to say two things about them. Um, one is that your typical big cloth swab should not run through your mouthpiece. I see a lot of students do that. We have to keep in mind the inside of our mouthpiece is much smaller than the bore of our clarinet. And trying to force a big, thick uh, cloth through there can actually damage it over time. I had a lovely mouthpiece once that I, you know, unknowingly in my youth, I ruined by doing it that way and it eventually wore down the rails of the inside of the mouthpiece so it didn't play. Especially if you have a swab with a bare metal end on it, dropping that metal end through there can also chip the inside of your mouthpiece. So the alternative for your mouthpiece, uh, what I do is I just wrap my swab around my finger and I wipe out what I can reach. I realize there's a little bit in the middle that I'm not drying well. It air dries. It's very easy to wash your mouthpiece out because it's 100% waterproof. So every now and then I just wash it in the sink, medium warm water. Different people have different things they use. Frankly, I use dish soap and just make sure I rinse it off so it doesn't taste bad next time I play it. But that's a good trick for you to use. Now as far as the style of swab that I would recommend, there are a few that I like. I definitely like these ones that they call the handkerchief swab. They're bigger and they, they do a better job of drying your instrument. Some of the kind of inexpensive clarinets come with these little teeny tiny chamois cloths and I just don't think they do a good job. Plus sometimes they leave lint in your instrument. I also have a silk one that I sometimes use. It's not quite as absorptive as cotton, but two run-throughs it works. Um, this is kind of my concert swab. It looks a bit more elegant. So I use the silk when I'm performing and sometimes at home I just use the cotton one. They all work fine. Uh, but important to maybe consider not swabbing your mouthpiece out if that's something that you've been doing. One last gadget that I'll mention right now. Uh, that I have a, an extensive video on, on sort of how to take care of your reeds here on the YouTube channel, is my reed resurfacer. It really helps revive a reed that maybe has dried out warped since I last used it. It definitely adds life to it, so I do have a video on how to use that. Highly recommend you have one in your case. And perhaps the other tool that I use a lot these days is my phone. I actually end up using it a lot for my clarinet, and it's because I have a fantastic metronome app on there, I have a fantastic tuner app on there, I videotape myself playing so that I can listen back to hear what I'm doing, I can check, I can put it on the side, see how my embouchure is doing, or see how my body tension looks. Very handy tool. So it's a way to consider if you already have some kind of smartphone, you can use it for all kinds of things when you're practicing your clarinet. All right, so that's today's mini lesson. Just a bunch of little gadgets. You probably are already familiar with some of them, but if you picked up some new information, it's handy, and I hope you enjoy it and make use of it. In fact, I would love to hear from you. There's a comments box right under this video. If you have any of your favorite gadgets to add to the list for other people to see or questions for me, please feel free to write it in there. If you're not already a member of the Clarinet Mentors community, I invite you to join. It's totally free. You can go to www.learnclarinetnow.com. And the main thing you get is a newsletter from me every two weeks, and it features a short video like this and some of my favorite pointers on how to play the clarinet more easily. Thanks for watching today's video, and I look forward to seeing you next time.